Greetings. Welcome back to Ministry Monday. I'm Carlton Kuhn. And uh, if you'd like to join our YouTube channel or some of the other things that we offer, it's available. I'm going to get through with the little part I want to share with you today. Uh, I want to talk with you about a couple of blog posts that are available on my website. And I also want to mention uh, my book regarding depression, light in a dark place, and the fact that I have an overabundance of stock due to coronavirus cancellations, and you can take advantage of them. I want to talk to us shepherds today. We are pastors, and uh, we have the responsibility of leading the flock of God. It's interesting to me where the Lord started as he began to spread the word abroad of something unique happening in the land of Israel. The Bible says in the second chapter of Luke that the shepherds, the pastors, returned. Where did they return to? They returned to their flock, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Now, as they passed folks along the way, they shared, but their priority was they returned to the flock glorifying and praising God. Has it ever been part of our understanding that praise and the celebration of the greatness of God should not be something that we cheer for, but something we lead in? The shepherds were the first of the praisers beyond the angels of the New Testament. It's interesting where The Bible says these shepherds were at. They were abiding in the field, keeping watch. That's number one. We relate to them. They were keeping watch. Number two, they were keeping watch over their flock by night. They were the night watchmen of the flock. And so you know what that is. You have been with families in the midst of darkness in the late night, counseling perhaps at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning or being up and the death watch with a family that's losing a loved one. Here they are doing what shepherds do. And then there is this divine interruption as God commissions that there would be an angel who would come and speak to them. And, of course, they were frightened. But the angel said to them, Fear not, I bring you good tidings of great joy. The angels, the angel, excuse me, shared with the shepherds the good tidings message, before it went to anybody else, the shepherds knew. Unto you is born this day, to you shepherds, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The shepherds knew about the good tidings and they knew about the Savior before any other of their community knew. What did the shepherds do? They said one to another. Maybe this is what we need to be doing. We need to dodge one another and say, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the Lord has made known to us. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the things that they had told them, the things that had been told them concerning this child. And they that heard it were amazed and they were astounded. And the shepherds, again, they returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. It's dangerous when I, as a shepherd, begin to focus my attention on things that I have not seen and have not heard. I have enough to communicate about that I know that I know that I know, for me to spend time and energy fretting, telling, and raising questions about things that I have not seen and have not heard except as a rumor spreading through the earth. Listen, my friends, we have a gospel message, and that gospel message brings good tidings It is a message of salvation. I feel as a shepherd that it is my responsibility to declare to our flock the good news of who Jesus is. It's going to be all right. God's got it. He's in charge. He's in control. Let's declare that message constantly and consistently 
to all who hear us. Now, thing I mentioned as I was opening, wrote a blog a couple of, sep- uh, couple of weeks ago, seven things that I learned from Crawford Kuhn, who's one of three mentors in my life. The other were T.F. Tenney and G.A. Mangan. Those two that I, I learned most of what I learned from them from afar. Crawford is an uncle, and I learned more close at hand from him. And uh, all three of them I learned very practical and relevant things from. The second thing I will mention is in the same setting, there are two different blog posts uh, regarding depression and overcoming depression. Depression is going to be very much an issue for many of the people that you pastor, if not for someone in your own household. As we continue to grind through this coronavirus and we hear of friends who are sick and ill and and perhaps we have family members who are decimated as we struggle with an economy that's going to take some time to to get back uh, to life. Uh, I wrote a book uh, last year, Light in a Dark Place, Encountering Depression. Uh, A hard copy of the book's discounted deeply right now. Uh, The Kindle version of it, which is usually $10.99, is $1.99 right now. Uh, If you can't afford any of that, if you'll just email me or send me a message from the YouTube or the Facebook channel, uh, I will send you a PDF of Light in a Dark Place. Because right now, ministry is more important than, than money. And I know what's going to happen in people's lives as they struggle with depression. The other is we have an overabundance of stock due to coronavirus cancellations. And so if you would um, be interested in getting ahead with some of your material, uh, there's a third off on everything that's in our stock room. And I'd like for you to have it instead of me having it and uh, because we're just overflowing with books right now. So anyway... Uh, but be a shepherd, be a pastor. If you have thoughts on any of this that can add to being an effective shepherd uh, and getting the word out and staying focused on what we know and what we have seen, please share it with us. God bless. Appreciate all of you. See you next Monday.